benzene has the chemical formula C6H6. It was discovered in the mid-19th century that benzene has a peculiar ring structure. To form the structure of benzene, we notice that we have a ring of six carbon atoms and that we have an alteration of single bonds and double bonds, at least in one version of the structure. So here we see a carbon-carbon double bond, followed by a single bond, then a double bond, then a single bond, then a double bond. So we have three double bonds and three single bonds within this six-member ring. We know from other evidence that this ring is in the shape of a perfect hexagon and that all the carbon-carbon bonds have identical length. So what we recognize here again is the phenomenon of resonance. When we draw the structure, we could just as well have switched this double bond with a single bond. And if we alternate throughout the entire molecule, we come up with two distinct resonant structures. Whenever we can draw more than one resonant structure, we recognize that neither of the structures is the true structure. The true structure is a sort of average of all the resonance structures. To form the Lewis structure for this molecule, we recognize that each carbon atom contributes four valence electrons. Therefore, there's a total of 24 valence electrons contributed by the carbon atoms. Each of the hydrogen atoms contributes one valence electron. Therefore, the entire molecule has 30 valence electrons that we have to distribute throughout the molecule. We can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for carbon by this pattern of alternating single and double bonds. To make the structure fit together nicely uh, in the Pegasus system, we actually have a slightly uh, redesigned style card just so that it makes a, a nice ring here. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms of benzene with a hydroxyl group, an OH group, we get a compound called phenol or phenol. This is an incredibly important compound in the history of medicine because under the name of carbolic acid, it was one of the first widely used disinfectants used in medical practice and in surgery. Derivatives of this compound are even used as mild anesthetics today. We notice this OH group, which in other contexts we would think of as an alcohol group. When it is bound to a benzene ring, though, it actually doesn't act very much like an alcohol, but acts much more like a weak acid. So phenol is a weak acid. To form the structure, we notice that each carbon atom contributes four valence electrons. So we get 24 valence electrons from the carbon atoms. The oxygen contributes six valence electrons. And each of the six hydrogen atoms each contributes one. Therefore, we have a total of 36 valence electrons in the compound. Starting with the benzene structure, we realize that we just form benzene with our alternating pattern of single and double bonds of carbon. And then attached to the ring, we have our hydroxyl group. Just as in the case of benzene, we could switch the pattern of single and double bonds to form a second resonant structure. Therefore, in phenol, the true structure is an average of two different competing and contributing resonance structures. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms of benzene by an NH2 group, an amino group, we get the important compound aniline. Now we're used to thinking of nitrogen, particularly with its lone pair, as being a base, and aniline is a base, but because of the chemical effect, 
of the benzene ring that's attached directly to the nitrogen, aniline is a much weaker base than ammonia is. To construct the structure, we notice that each carbon atom contributes four valence electrons. So we get 24 electrons from the carbon atoms. The nitrogen atom contributes five valence electrons. And we have a total of seven hydrogen atoms, each of which contributes one valence electron. Therefore, we have another 36 electron system. Again, we have the benzene ring as a principal building block of our structure with its pattern of alternating double and single bonds around the six membered ring. Just as in benzene or in phenol or toluene and many other compounds, we can write at least two resonant structures. For example, in this particular carbon, I could just as well have switched the double bond to here and the single bond to there. Um, in that other resonant structure, we still have an alternating pattern of single followed by double bonds. One thing to mention also is that when we have this alternating pop, uh, pattern of single and double bonds, it's also evidence that we have delocalization of electrons around the ring and we have additional stability and we have a property which we call aromaticity about which you will learn more in your organic chemistry courses. Among other things, aniline is an interesting uh, compound in that in its pure form, it is a clear liquid. Yet, when you buy a new bottle of aniline, almost invariably, as soon as you open the bottle, you notice that it is brown. And the reason for that is that in the presence of uh, even a little bit of light, aniline will polymerize. And many of the polymeric prop, uh, uh, compounds that you get from aniline are brightly colored. And in fact, there's a specific polymer that you can build from aniline called polyaniline. And polyaniline has very, very interesting properties. In fact, I did my PhD research on the properties of that particular polymer. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms of benzene with a methyl group, CH3, we end up with a compound called toluene. Toluene is like benzene, an important solvent in organic chemistry. It also has the interesting property that when added to gasoline, it boosts the octane rating. Uh, benzene will do this, but toluene does it even more effectively. As a result, the ability to synthesize toluene on a vast scale was enormously important for the Western allies in the Second World War because they were able to synthesize toluene on a massive scale and they added it to aviation fuel, particularly for fighter planes, which gave them an a huge advantage over fighters flown by Nazi Germany. To synthesize the structure for toluene, we know that in this case we have seven carbon atoms. Each of the carbon atoms contributes four valence electrons. And we know that we have a total of eight hydrogens, each of which contributes one valence electron. Therefore, we have yet another 36 electron system. And again, we have the main structural unit is our benzene ring, a six-member carbon ring featuring alternating single and double bonds. Of course, as we noticed, when we have the benzene ring, we can draw at least two resonance structures for it by, sw by swapping the positions of the single and double bonds. On the other hand, the methyl will attach to the benzene ring by just a single bond. In addition to its use as a solvent and a fuel additive, um, some students might be familiar with toluene also as a solvent used for building uh, polystyrene models. It's a very useful adhesive because it will uh, stick two pieces of the polystyrene plastic together, essentially by dissolving small bits 
of both faces of the two pieces that you push together and then fusing them together when the toluene solvent evaporates. Benzene is such a fascinating molecule in organic chemistry because it is quite easy to add other groups to the ring. We had already seen that if we add one OH group to the ring, we get the weak acid phenol, also known as carbolic acid. We can also add two OH groups together. If we add them so that they're attached to neighboring carbons, we call this ortho substitution. So in this particular molecule we have created here, we have an ortho dihydroxybenzene. This particular compound goes by the trivial or common name of catechol. Catechol is particularly interesting for a number of reasons, one of which is that the two oxygen atoms being right next to each other uh, make catechol a useful bidentate ligand in inorganic chemistry. Also, this compound is very easily oxidized to a group of compounds called quinones to create the structure uh, within the Lewis Langmuir theory. We notice that we have two oxygen atoms, each of which contributes six valence electrons. We have a total of six carbons, each of which contributes four, and we have a total of six hydrogen atoms. Altogether, we have a total of 42 valence electrons that we have to allocate around the system. Again, whenever we have these aromatic compounds, these compounds that are derived from benzene, we generally want to create the benzene ring first. This ring tends to be so stable that generally, generally, uh, no matter what groups we add to the ring, the benzene ring itself stays intact. And we recognize the benzene ring as a six-member ring with alternating single and double bonds between the carbon atoms. The hydroxyl groups are attached through single bonds to neighboring carbons in this particular case. As we had mentioned, even though these look like what we would otherwise call alcohol groups, their effect is very much changed by being attached to a benzene ring such that these groups end up being mildly acidic. If we replace one or more carbon atoms from a ring system, we obtain a class of compounds called heterocycles. An important heterocycle is the compound pyridine, which has the chemical formula C5H5N. Pyridine is an important solvent and ligand in inorganic chemistry. We notice that the nitrogen has a lone pair available for donation. We can think of pyridine as a kind of uh, parallel to benzene where we've replaced a carbon and its attached hydrogen with one nitrogen atom. To form the structure of pyridine, we note that each carbon atom brings four valence electrons, each nitrogen contributes five valence electrons, and each of the five hydrogen atoms contributes one. Therefore, we again have a 30 electron system. We also just like in benzene, have a six-member ring, and we notice that we have alternating single and double bonds among the members of the ring. And just as in benzene, we can write a second resonance structure merely by swapping the single bonds and the double bonds in the ring. We recognize in that case that neither of those resonance structures is the true structure, the true structure is an average of all the contributing resonance structures. Also, with this alternating pattern of single and double bonds, we have the additional stability, which we call aromaticity.
in the Lewis Langmuir theory, we know that boron contributes three valence electrons for each atom in a compound. And we know that each nitrogen atom contributes five valence electrons. If we look at a boron nitrogen unit, together they contribute three plus five equals eight electrons. If we compare that to a two carbon unit, C2, we recognize that a two carbon unit also contributes eight valence electrons. Therefore, we say that Bn is isoelectronic to C2. This relationship is often very important in inorganic chemistry. We know, for example, that diamond, which is a allotrope of carbon, consisting entirely of carbon atoms, is the hardest material. If we replace all of those carbons with Bn units, we obtain a mineral called boron nitride, which is nearly as hard as carbon and has very similar structures. We can take this idea a little further and we can replace the C2 units in benzene by Bn units. If we do that, we end up with a similar six member ring and a compound called borazine. Borazine has a number of similarities in physical properties with benzene, which have led to it being dubbed inorganic benzene. Its chemical properties are somewhat different in that uh, borazine is far more reactive than benzene is. To develop its structure, we notice that the, each boron atom contributes three electrons, each nitrogen contributes five, and each of the six hydrogen atoms contributes one. Therefore, we end up with another 30 electron system. And just as in benzene, in the six member ring, we have alteration of single bonds and double bonds. So therefore we have delocalization of electrons around the ring. And just as in benzene, we can have two distinct resonance structures. So well, I have one structure uh, assembled on the cork board here. We could just as well have put this single bond over here and the double bond over here to generate a second resonance structure. The chemical formula of benzene is B3N3H6. We noticed in these, this particular compound that not only have we satisfied the duet rule for hydrogen, we satisfied the octet rule for nitrogen, and we satisfied the octet rule for boron. And boron is not electron deficient in this particular compound. So while boron and aluminum are very often found to only have an six electrons, to have an incomplete octet, in this particular compound, each of the boron atoms has a complete octet. So therefore we are able to satisfy the duet rule and the octet rule for each and every atom in the compound.